Tonight, we continue our exclusive series on the polygamous FLDS church and the towns they controlled for decades. Good evening, and thanks so much for joining us for 12 News at 10. I'm Tram Mai. I'm Mark Curtis. For the first time in years, we're speaking with Brielle Decker, the 65th wife of Warren Jeffs, the self-proclaimed prophet over thousands of his followers. Team 12's Chase Golightly took the trip up to Short Creek Valley to hear her story of overcoming abuse. Chase? Tram Mark, at just 18 years old, Brielle Decker was forced to marry Warren Jeff shortly after he came to power and endured years of abuse. Now she helps others who want to escape the lifestyle she was raised in. Massive homes are spread throughout Colorado City, Arizona and Hilldale, Utah. Surrounded by towering walls, to keep people from looking in. This one. The house is 45 rooms. We were invited into a 28,000 square foot house where an infamous polygamous FLDS prophet ruled. So this was uh, Warren Jeff's house. Warren Jeff's new home is a Texas prison after he was sentenced to life behind bars for sex crimes against children. The self-proclaimed prophet had more than 70 wives who all lived here including Brielle Decker. I was the 65th wife of Warren Jeffs. Brielle was raised in the FLDS religion, having 13 siblings and two mothers, one of her older sisters marrying Jeff's father, Rulin, who was the prophet at the time. She first met Warren while attending the Alta Academy in Salt Lake City, a school just for those in the religion. So he was my principal all my childhood, clear up till sixth grade. My first grade teacher was his first wife. Growing up, the rules were simple do as the prophet commanded. Well, the grooming process was pretty intense for me. If you dated, it was actually worthy of blood atonement. Like, it was a serious crime. Brielle said she played the part she was told, but it didn't stop bullying from her siblings and abuse from those in the community. I had at least 60 abusers. At 16, she and her family moved to Colorado City like so many. When Ruin Jeffs passed away in 2002, Warren became the prophet and started taking dozens of wives, including Brielle, right after she turned 18. I was actually terrified of the whole situation, and I think he picked up on it. Brielle said after the secret wedding ceremony, the sexual abuse by Jeffs began with no escape. So I was kind of just trapped within the, the walls in my own community. She witnessed Warren breaking families apart and even married children as young as 12 years old. I was just so angry. Then when Jeffs was arrested, Brielle made the decision to leave, jumping out of her bedroom window and ran as far as she could, anything to get away from the abuse she endured her whole life. You know, it's amazing that I even survived that. Now, 17 years later, Brielle is married again, living in Hilldale, Utah, and advocating for others who want to leave the church, working for a nonprofit located in the very home where she was abused. In 2017, she was awarded Warren's compound and helped transform it into the Short Creek Dream Center that houses and provides services to those wanting to start over like she did. They have to learn to cope, so they definitely need the help, mm -hmm. but to admit it is another thing. During this interview, we could hear children running and playing in the room right above us. 45 rooms that are always filled. Fill it to capacity for the last three years, you know. Yeah, it's quite a bit of people. The home that once trapped Brielle inside, now helping others get out. The Short Creek Valley has changed so much since the time of Warren Jeffs, but the remnants of the FLDS church still linger. Tomorrow on 12 News, we are hearing from city leaders about that change and what else their towns still have to overcome. We're live in the newsroom, Chase Golightly, 12 News. Chase, thanks.